calling control tower. Tell all the boys and girls I'm coming in. From out of the blue comes Captain Facto, landing at a secret airfield west of Rockville. His mission cartoon fun for you, and space experiments with the mysterious Dr. Xavier. His profession, space volunteer. I was already at Channel 3. I went there in 1956. He showed up in 1963. And I remember I was an announcer director, and he was walking through the control room. That's the first time I saw him. And I said he had a great voice. You can recognize it just like that. And the funny thing, we had something in common. I was Captain Sacto, and way back when he was in Maine on a TV station back there, he had a children's show, the host of the Superman show. And from there, he went, turned into one of the greatest reporters this town will ever see. Anytime there was a big story, it was almost like, get me Mike Boyd. Boyd covered all the big ones. Charles Manson, in fact, I saw him just the other night on Cold Case Files. They had a clip of him doing a story on the East Area Rapist. And that was just two days ago while he was in the hospital. But uh, he did sensational uh, special reports on, on San Quentin and the prisons and, uh, and the Civil War. And he could do anything. And he had a lot of friends. As I said, I was in his room just the other night, and the place was packed. And they were reading emails from people who knew him real well. And there was one from Sam Shane, by the way. And I remember Mike saying he was one of the good guys. So uh, we're really going to miss him. The news business is really going to miss him. And me too. In 1995, he once again donned the Captain Sacco uniform for an anniversary edition of his kid show. I notice it's in black and white, and this is the 90s. Let me... Ah, there's something you've never seen before in your life. This is Captain Facto speaking. Clear the runway. I'm taking off. Audrey Farrington, this presentation has been specially prepared for you. After 30 years of virtually unbroken TV presence in this market, I remain extremely active and highly visible, as you can see at this, the sixth annual anti-drug rally, attended by thousands of youngsters from seven school districts, addressed by government and civic dignitaries, and which I was invited to MC. Just say no! Just say no! But there are times when I'm glad that I say yes, and one of the times I'm glad I said yes was when I was invited to be here with you this morning. 
So you are all welcome for this, the sixth annual Just Say No March and Rally. We are on the west steps of the California State Capitol. A far cry from the winter of 1958 in New Haven, Connecticut, where, for WNHC Channel 8, I made my very first public appearance as a cartoon show host, and where I established a record of building success faster than any previous local show host in the entire Triangle organization, including their flagship station in Philadelphia. From which, by recommendation of national sales rep Blair, I ended up creating for KOVR in Sacramento in 1961, the Captain Delta Show, which in less than two years dominated a market that included three previously established hosts on channels 3 and 10. Now comes putting Channel 40 on the air in 1968. This is from the very first week, an effort that took less than three years for this station's manager to tell me I was a giant killer because I had overtaken the position I had created myself at Channel 13. Cartoon Ahoy! The intervening years to the very present have been a never-ending kaleidoscope of parades, carnivals, school visits, grand openings, remotes, and fairs. What do you think about all of this, Nathaniel? It's fun. Can you see the TV40 camera shooting yeah. at us? Way, way down there. At the California State Fair, still, this morning, with youngsters uh, who may be on the disabled, handicapped side, having a good time as guests of the fair and sponsored by the 2030 Club, and in general, having the fair come to them while they come to the fair. Yeah. What is she? This is Jennifer, isn't it? Yeah. And you just... I I watch TV. Do you? You do? Do you? I, I see. Do you get to see the programs on TV, honey? I get to see Camping Match. Oh, wonderful. At the TV. At the Netherlands. What do you think you're going to do at the fair today? What kind of fun are you going to have? Um, um, we play. Mm hmm. And we have some swings. Oh. And that's fun. I think it's wonderful that you're here. And I'm very glad to meet you, Jennifer. And thank you for coming on you, my TV show. You, Do you know that? You glad. Hmm? You glad you meet me? I am thrilled that I meet you. I'm... Okay. And he give me kisses. <laughs> Anchors away, Captain Mitch's TV40 Roadshow. This week, Captain Mitch is on the road down the valley and drops anchor today at Vintage Fair in Modesto, California. We're in Modesto. We're at Vintage Fair. The big, beautiful, two-level shopping mall in Modesto. You understand that? Let me explain to you and to you, Modesto. You leave Sacramento, you go down the Sacramento Valley, right? You go through Slodi, you go through Stockton, you go through Manteca. You come to Modesto, and we are here to spend a lot of time having lots of fun visiting in this wonderful community. They say it's a runaway train. You think we'll be safe? Yeah, I have a good idea. We will. Okay, well, let's see how we do here. See if we manage to survive, okay? If, I hope I don't lose my hat. I hope I don't lose my head. I hope I don't lose my glasses. And I hope I don't lose my life. And I hope I don't lose you, okay? <laughs> if you really were a craftsman, the way Daniel McGibbon is, who is right here, then uh, you, would, uh, you would only have to uh, uh, just follow his instructions or follow what he is doing to really, really make unusual. Now, Daniel, uh, you've been working at this for quite a little while, and I see that you have, uh, you're making teeth that shine almost in the dark, I suppose. <laughs> Visiting the Nut Tree Pumpkin Patch, our two young ladies from the Sacramento area. Uh, are you friends? Yeah. But you're not related, you're not cousins or anything like that? No. Your name? Laura. And your name? Carrie. To celebrate Halloween, 
Delta Dog and I are visiting the pumpkin patch at the famous Nut Tree in Vacaville. All week long, we'll be sharing with you the pumpkins, the scarecrows, all the ghosts and goblins and wonderful creatures hiding in the haystacks. Okay. So, shall I tell the story about the tree? Underneath where? Right there. Is there a tree underneath there? This is the tree. This is the dog. Oh! You proved my case. Everybody here already knows how to read. Water World Attendants, I'm sitting here with Chris in front of the boat. Or in the boat. In front of the robot, right? I lost my hat. We're behind the scenes at Cal Expo Waterworld. Three hours before opening today on TV 58 day. I'll be here in person this afternoon. Now I'm going to start my way up the cliffhanger. Let's see if I can really make it to the top. From San Francisco, crossroads of the world, the glittering jewel in California's shining crown, KNEW-TV proudly presents Meet Mr. Mitch. And now, here's Mitch. In the midst of all this, I produced and performed five programs a week for Metro Media at KNEW Channel 32 in San Francisco for nearly a year. Would you please give a very warm welcome to my honored guest today, Mr. Milton Frome. Girls. Make yourself comfortable. Thank you very, very much. What a wonderful show. What a wonderful yeah. group of young talent you have here today, Mitch. Well, they're earning television broadcaster certificates along with everything else. And Would I you believe it. One boy running cameras and all that. Golly, this is really fantastic. May I say this, and I go on record by saying this. You have an ideal show for children. This is one of the... I've appeared on 40 television shows in the past 20 weeks in this character, which I'll talk to you about, <laughs> you know. But this is a tremendous idea. It's just fantastic. What you're doing with these youngsters here is really great. And I hope you boys and girls are my mommies and dads out there who watch Mr. Mitch really appreciate the wonderful things he's doing with children today. That meant 10 programs a week at Channel 40, 5 programs a week at Channel 32, public appearances on the weekends, and conducted my agency business at the same time. How's that for high energy? Audrey, I invite you to visit Safetyville's big fundraiser on Bradshaw Road Friday evening, September 28th where I will be appearing on behalf of Skipper's Restaurants, who are planning an enormous expansion in Northern California, using me as their figurehead and spokesman. And you're invited to the Sacramento Community Center Theater either Monday or Thursday morning, October 8th or 11th, when I will be narrating with the Sacramento Symphony Orchestra for special youth concerts before thousands of school children. Now, <laughs> maybe go to work. You're watching KTXL TV 40, Sacramento, Stockton. Well, how do you feel this afternoon? What have you been doing with this with this day? Um, kind of sitting back, glowing in the after. What you do, the afterglow of Thanksgiving? Have you been very active? You've been out shopping, Christmas season now in full swing? 
Well, anyhow, we are here with, with guess what, cartoons. And we're going to stick by our guns. We're going to show those cartoons, and we're going to show the Electro Woman Croft superstars this afternoon, and on throughout all the rest of the things that you've come to expect for enjoyment on TV 40. So here we go, cartoon was Ranger Rick who, uh, who sat on a split rail fence and showed us uh, Rip Wilson and Lash LaRue Westerns. Yeah, yeah. And there was a guy named Bonanza Bill who um, every afternoon managed to drive his Jeep down to the studio and make it just in time for work. I couldn't quite understand that. Later on, of course, Bonanza Bill morphed into Fred Wade. Uh, Stu Nahan morphed into Bill Race, and there was a lot of children's entertainment going on over at Channel 3. Uh, Channel 10 had uh, Norm Bales as Diver Dan, and that was kind of an interesting thing because some brilliant person over at Channel 10 created the sidekick for Diver Dan, whose name was O.U. Squid. Now. That meant nothing to the kids, but to the parents, they might have recalled that 35 years earlier, there was a popular uh, radio motion picture and uh, a recording artist by the name of Eddie Cantor. And he recorded a song that was very popular at the time called, I Love My Wife, But Oh You Kid. <laughs> well, somebody remembered that over at Channel 10, and if it didn't connect the kid with the kids, it probably did connect with some of the adults, and that was an important component of it as well, if you think about it, is to generate that audience, that loyal audience, not only of the kids, but also of the moms uh, and the dads. Okay, there was a period of time when uh, when uh, the kiddie shows kind of went away from me. I, I quit paying attention to kiddie shows and paid more attention to the girl across the street. And so there's this blank spot in my development. But eventually, over at Channel 13, there was Captain Delta, and he morphed into another Captain Delta, and that was Mitch Agris and Charlie Duncan, who are uh, with us here today. Um, and uh, I'm very happy to uh, have been a part of a, a very small part, and this is really important because it establishes my kiddie show credentials, okay? <laughs> Mitch Agris, when he moved to Channel 40, he ran an advertising agency. He needed to pay attention to his, his clientele, and he would come in once every couple of weeks, record the raps, and then we would play those recordings of Mitch and intersperse them with Popeye and Bugs Bunny and the rest of the cartoon characters. Well, Jack Matranga one day decided that Pac-Man was so popular that he had discovered this little interactive game that he could play with the kids on the air, and Mitch was going to do that on his television show. Well, that meant Mitch had to come in every, every day and not pay attention to uh, his, uh, his, uh, custom, his clients and uh, pay the bills. Because Jack didn't pay him much more than a couple pickled herrings and a, and a bucket of rocks anyway. <laughs> so they asked me if I would fill in at least once a week and maybe a few other times so Mitch could pay attention to what was really important. Well, Mitch was Captain Mitch. And I had to be something, so I became Swabby Bobby. <laughs> and uh, took care of uh, Mitch's obligations on those days when uh, Mitch wasn't able to do that. So, uh, I, I, all that being said, I'm very happy to be here today, and I'm very happy, and I'm looking forward to hearing what these gentlemen are going to say a little bit later on. So, thank you. written a, uh, a, a brief autobiography that I got to read, and it's just amazing the career he had before kid shows. He's performed on stage with the Burt Lahr, the guy that was the Cowardly Lion in Wizard of Oz. He's on stage kissed Nancy Reagan Davis in a play, and at one time Jack Klugman, who was Quincy and all those other, and Odd Couple and all, was on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. And he publicly thanked Mitch Agris 
on the Tonight Show for getting him interested in the theater and his career started. So a very, very colorful life and career, and I'm so thrilled and honored to have him here with us today. Please welcome a true TV legend, Mitch Eggers. I, um, I hope you'll forgive me if I remain seated. I won't, I won't say too much. Okay, which, which mic shall I use? Can, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Stan? <laughs> I, I, my hearing aids are in. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know, this is a delightful gathering, and it's, a, it's a, such a joy to be here and see so many friends I haven't seen in years, including Swabby Bobby here, <laughs> whom, I, whom I adore. who was just a great friend, and a friend in need at times when things were tough, I must say. I, the, you know, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, my observation about all of this is that uh, I have lived through th three separate eras of ex professional and personal ex existence, and and um, you know, it, it, it's what happens if you live so long, and um, that the part that we're here celebrating, and you know, I'm surprised when I look at. But that's the things that people remember and, and, and what is recorded. I mean, some of that stuff is, is um, almost unbelievably funny to me. <laughs> but um, I, I, I'm aware that, that in these three separate eras, each of them about 25 to 30 years in length, that the part we're talking about here in Sacramento and in the broadcast period that we're talking about only represents one, about a third of the things that mattered to me in my life. And the things that happened before and the things that happened after the television experiences as Captain Delta and Captain Mitch, um, uh, they matter, matter to me personally, maybe more, but the part that we're celebrating here mattered a great deal to so many other people that you, you know, unless you get out in the, in, into your viewing area, you're not aware how widespread your influence can be. And in, in the 60s and the early 70s, before cable was everywhere, um, you know, the, the things that we did were very important to the rural, for the children in the rural areas, up and down the valley, whether it was in Escalon or Tracy or places that you, uh, and, and unless you visited and actually were there, you didn't realize how every syllable that you uttered was reaching so many people and so many young youngsters, and and that this was their life because where they lived, there wasn't much else for them to, enter, to entertain them or to do. And these programs that we did had a great deal of influence, and thank God we were using a, a modicum of taste. Although I do remember one, one live experience in which a young girl was the sudden winner of a beautiful doll, and she was so surprised on live television, her reaction was, she I didn't know what, no, we just kept right on going and nobody really said anything. But, uh, you know, these are, these are some of the surprises. But I must, I must tell you that, that um, I feel like, uh, you know, there's an old, an old saying, and it, I, it applies. It says, like, I've, I've outlived the era for which I was born 30 years too soon. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just thrilled. This is a wonderful occasion. And thank you for having me. Thank you for the opportunity to see Charlie here again. You, and you might want to, oh, this is a, just a, before I finish up here, you might want to know how Captain Delta's name became Captain Mitch, um, because there's a little story behind that. When I uh, left Channel 13, I was very carefully informed that the title and the name of Captain Delta was the property of KOVR and Metro Media, I mean, uh, and, and McClatchy. 
and that I was not allowed to use it anywhere else. So that a year or two later, when I started working at Channel 40, we didn't know what the hell to call me. <laughs> and uh, at first we said, your favorite captain, but we did, that was a little bit self, you know. And, um, and so eventually I just decided that nobody can steal my own name, and so I called her Captain Mitch. And no sooner did we spend a year and a half building up Captain Mitch than I got a letter from the lawyers and they said, you own the name of Captain Delta. <laughs> and I said, well, I can't use it now anymore. It's, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, you know, it doesn't apply. But it was very funny because I still have hidden away the legal papers that say that I am the legal owner of the name of Captain Delta. <laughs> Never heard that story. <laughs> well, Charlie, you made your mark, and it was wonderful, and uh, and uh, so on. But I want to end up with a, with, a, with a joke, and the joke has nothing to do with television or anything. It's just for a laugh, because um, um, it, uh, I just think of it. And it makes me chuckle when, I, when I'm going along, and it's just, it's just an old funny story. And it, it's uh, you know you're talking about Eddie Cantor. I was. Ed Wynn used to have, you know, he had his burlesque and all in vaudeville show, and he, at one in one instance he would, his little blackout sketches, and he would he came on with a big stick, and he said, Ed, what do you have there? And he said, This is an eleven foot pole. <laughs> eleven foot pole. Well, well, Ed, what's it for? He says it's for people you wouldn't touch with a ten foot pole. <laughs> So that's it. Thank you for this pleasure, man. Thank you for that. Uh, next, I want to show you a little picture of the how I was uh, inspired about... This is embarrassing. My, my parents got me a hat. But in 1968, Somehow my parents sent in a postcard or whatever had to be done, and I was a seven-year-old on Captain Delta and with oh. Charlie Duncan, who has now become a friend on so many levels, including he's kind of been our mentor at a church we joined about a year ago, so my life has come full circle with him. But uh, when I was on the show, he gave me the grand tour of KOVR to see the lights and the sets. So I don't know whether to thank him for a great TV career or blame him for a great TV career. But here is my very good friend, Charlie Duncan, Captain Delta number two. Thank you, Ron. I guess it's good to be number two. Uh, I never really thought about it before, though. In any event, uh, Ron's been a godsend to me. He came out of the blue after I had left television many years ago. And somebody told me they'd just seen me all over the uh, computer. Well, he had collected pictures of Captain Delta and put it on his website. Website? I'd never heard of a website. <laughs> so anyway, he... Uh, uh, I got to know him by by that means, and as he says, well, the rest is history. That's, somebody else says that, but uh, that's our our story together. And uh, but now he's a Presbyterian. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or not. Don't blame me for that too. <laughs> uh, in any event. When I, I heard the story of, of Mitch's departure from Channel 13, uh, I had, and his whole story is one of change and excitement. And my career was altogether different. He worked for all of these companies, and I spent 42 years with the McClatchy organization. Wow! Wow! And, wow. Uh, <laughs> then I got what I was told was a great retirement, but it hasn't worked out that way either. <laughs> but in any event, uh, uh, I was called into Ramsey Elliott's office and told that he had good news for me. That uh, I was going to take over 
for Mitch Agris. And I thought the worst. I thought, my gosh, he's got an incurable disease. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I had never done any television acting. I had spent some time at the Eaglet Theater playing such people as Benjamin Franklin in 1776, and I, I had loved that. But anyway, uh, they told me that I was going to take over for Mitch Agers as soon as they got Eleanor McClatchy's okay. Well, she was ha traveling in Italy at that time. So, uh, well, she said, okay, you can have him for a while, but I want him to operate the Sacramento Bee Museum because I know he's interested in history. And so it didn't, it didn't seem like it was going to be a very long stay. Well, it wasn't, because it seemed like it just a minute or two, but I was there for almost five years, and I loved every minute of it. And uh, I don't know that I, I took to it too well, but I managed to show up every day, and, and uh, I didn't say shit or <laughs> anything like that, but... Uh, uh, I, I managed to take my place and do my job. But uh, when I was shoved into the breach, it was Mitch's last day and we hadn't had a chance to talk. And, and uh, so I said to him as he was going out the door, I said, well, Mitch, what advice do you have for me? And he said, just keep talking <laughs> and I guess it worked for him and uh, I, I, I think it, it worked for me too because I had so much fun met so many wonderful people and uh, found myself in the organizing group for this organization where all of you people are wonderful people too and I thank you for having me join Mitch I, I do want to uh, would you bring me the jacket, please, Norm, or Ron? Now, I, I, this, I dug this out of the mothballs at my house, and I told Ron I couldn't find it, so I wasn't going to wear it. Well, lo and behold, yesterday I happened to cross it. And, uh, and I thought after going to all that trouble, not as steady on my feet as I used to be. Have you noticed that? Uh, oh, thank you. Anyway, it's only got one sleeve. Oh, no, there it is. Okay. Now, yes. Yeah. And also, it's only got two stripes. <laughs> That's a long story. My daughter was in some play and needed a coat, and, but it wasn't for a captain, so we had to take two stripes <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, you will. That's <laughs> so anyway, thank you for hearing my plaintive story. <laughs> and. Uh, I lost an eye along the way, so I got to turn around and see who's here. Oh, hi! Yeah. Yeah. Good to hey, see Captain. you. Okay. Thank you for having me. And if you got any questions, I'm sure Mitch can handle them. <laughs> Thank you. You look great. You look great. But our final guest today was a fellow cameraman, he was at Channel 10 and I was at 3, and I never knew an earlier history he had there, but he was involved in kid show activity. Rich Raymond, I know you're he's over here, you can come up and talk to us. This is Mr. O.U. Squid. O.U. <laughs> Squid. Hi. Uh, you got me there? Great. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're rolling? Yeah. <laughs> For those
those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Rich Raymond, and uh, I was I was a gopher before I was a squid. I started at Channel 10 in 63, and of course my job was to go for this and go for that. You know the joke. But anyway, uh, after about four years there, I became the third squid on the Diver Dan show. And Norm Bales was well, the... That's better than number two. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I was the third squid. You were number two, and I was still second banana. <laughs> Because I was a squid, and, and let alone that, I, you were live and I was on a puppet, you know, running the strings from a ladder <laughs> up in the rafters with the rest of the lights. <laughs> so, Norm, uh, he was a staff announcer there. We had three staff announcers in those days. And they, you know, of course, did all the breaks live and commercials and kept the logs and all the other things. And then they did commercials. And Norm drew the unlucky straw maybe to... Uh, do the Diver Dan Show, which was created by Bob Kelly, Norm, and the first squid, who was Alan Sims. And Al is still around. Uh, they started out doing, they were going to call it OU, OU Octopus, but <laughs> so they went with the squid. And uh, then after Al did the thing, and he, he left Channel 10, and he became a, a professor out at uh, Sac State. Uh, Dick Cruiser took over, and he was the second squid, and I was on the floor at that time, and then Dick finally went into weather, and then he left the station, so they went, okay, who wants to be the next squid, and I went like that, <laughs> and uh, lo and behold, I got my first job on air, on top of a ladder, working a marionette, going, Hi, Diver! The next crazy cat cartoon where they're going bang on the head. <laughs> That's what we did. And Norm, uh, Norm was a great guy to work with. He uh, studied law and later went on to become a public defender in Sacramento. And unfortunately, he had a heart attack, and that's why he's not with us today. But he was a great guy to work with and a lot of fun. And so just to wind it up, I want you to all sing a song. Now, I know that the riches and the deltas can't do it, but it's, it's yo-ho, he, the wind blows free, oh, for a life on the rolling sea. <laughs>